today we're back to closure and I set up a pretty simple project here. There's nothing crazy going on. We just have a simple depth.eat in here and inside of core.clj we just are printing hello world. In a separate terminal, I set the alias to run. So all we need to do is run that alias and it should print out hello world. Now you may notice that the name of the project is advent and that's because today we have something to do with the advent calendar or advent of code that happens every year and i know that i'm a little late to try to do it and i didn't do it in 2020 just because well 2020 was kind of a crazy year but i'm not gonna actually go through all the advent of code challenges instead today we're gonna do a little bit of testing and advent of code is a good use case because we have the intended effects we just need to be able to come up with the solution but before we start on this test case, we need to set up a test runner inside of our project. So back to our project, we need to go back to depth.eden and we're going to create another alias here and I'll just name it test. Now this part may be new to you if you never created a project bigger than just the source directory, but we can specify both extra paths and extra dependencies. Now these two are only available to this specific alias and this project is so small that you could actually just add it up here into a normal path like this. But I want to get into the habit of adding it into the dependencies here or the aliases here so that it won't be too different when we start creating a bigger application. Now the test runner dependency that I'm going to be using is Kocha from Lambda Island. And if you are interested in seeing the solutions to all of the advent of code of 2020 i believe the land island youtube channel has made a video on each one so definitely go check that out if you can now also remember to check these versions because these may not be up to date but these are going to be the ones that i'm using today and then finally we need to specify the main options and we just want to run the kocha test runner so that'll be all so we can save this and now we need to create this new path so in here so let's make a new directory called test and here I also need a directory called advents and then I'll just call the file core test.clj. So to write test, we do need some requirements or some imports and it comes from the standard library. So we don't need to actually add another dependency. First, we'll need the macro of death test and then the two functions testing and is. And the best thing to do when you're setting up tests is to set up a failing test. So first, the macro of testing is just going to list out the name of the test that we want to create. And this could be anything. I'm just going to say fix me, I fail. And then is is the function for assertions. And this is where we can just set equalities. So here we're going to test if one is equal to two, which it isn't. So in our separate terminal, we can run clj-m for the main alias of test. And this is the first time you're running the alias. You might have to download a bunch of dependencies, but closure will take care of it. What? Hmm. All right, let's try this again. All right, there we go. So our test is failing. And also to address this error up here is because I had the wrong versions. So originally I had 763, but it was supposed to be 732 and 7.5. And I think that has to do with the incompatibility of the new closure alias syntax of dash M instead of dash A. Thought I should mention it. So going back to the terminal output, this is what you see when you get a failed test. We can also check what a successful test is by making sure that one is indeed equal to one. And just rerunning this, I'm gonna clear everything. So it's gonna go from the top. So now if we run CLJ dash M test, we just see that it it ran the test. It doesn't actually give us any output. Now let's go back to the admin of code for our test case. So given this list of numbers, which I'm gonna copy, we're looking for two entries where when they are added together, they form 2020. And the solution is multiplying those two numbers together. So let's go in here and add our test fixture inside of a death. Oh, that's right. Uh, I need to change this. There we go. So this is how you write a list. And now let's change our test to have a better name. So this will be... And what was the answer? The answer here is 514579. 514579. 
So this is gonna be the answer, and then on the right side, we're gonna invoke whatever function that we're gonna get, given the test fixture. Now, day one doesn't exist because we need to create it, and we're gonna get it from admin.core, which is our original project. So now we need to make this function and make sure that it passes this test. So let's go back into core.clj and make sure that day one exists, which takes an input. And for now, let's just return the number so that our test can pass when we do clj-m test. This is mostly to see that these two files could actually connect. Now we know that input is gonna be a list and we could change that list into a set. So then the collection is, takes out all the duplicated values. And I'm still kind of new at list comprehension, but we could use a for function here. And this will iterate through the list, checking for two values, X and Y. And we're just gonna check when they both add up to 2020. Now you can also use this binding here, like a let block. We'll return the multiplication of X and Y. And then back in our second terminal, we could test this and it fails, but it fails by a data type because we're expecting the integer and not a set. But we do get the correct value, so that's a good step. To fix that, we can just wrap this entire function and just return the first value of the list. Now our test should succeed when we do this. And it does, which is cool. I forgot there was a part two. But now we can do the real test, which is to take the puzzle input and make sure that it matches this output. And then we can also make the test for part two as well. So let's just grab the input, which is gonna be all of these. And let's be smart about this. I'm gonna make another directory with a file called input.txt because I don't wanna add all of these into a closure file. That would be ridiculous. But for this to be read, we need to update our devs.eden to have access to the resources directory. And that's pretty much it. So this is gonna be part one. And we're going to need to make sure that we rename that function to part one, because now we also need to do a part two solution. But luckily, the part two solution uses the same data fixture. The only difference is that now instead of two numbers being summed together, we need three numbers to be summed together. And it'll produce this value, which I'll copy, and we'll do the same thing. So we'll set the equality to take whatever function that we're going to create, send it the text fixture. Now, these functions need to exist first, and before we do, let's just make sure that we import it so we don't have to come back to this file. So let's go back to core.clj, rename this to part one, and then make another function with part two. And it is essentially the same. So I'm gonna copy and paste from part one, and just add a third input so that we can make sure that the sum of x, y, and z it's 2020 and then we return the product of x y and z and we can first test that and make sure that works by doing clj n test and it failed why why did it fail a1 part 2 failed we got nil what so no list is being returned let's open a and repl so we can play around with these functions so let's go in here let's connect to the repl all right so I wonder what's happening in here. Let's take this and go in core, because maybe we don't have access to test. And I'm just gonna do day one to, to send in the text fixture. All oh, right, refresh. Evaluates, current form, nil. Why is it nil? Wait a minute, this changed. <laughs> this changed on me. All right, the text fixture actually changed. So, yeah, they're different. That's sneaky, man. And that means that, so our test should pass now. All right, I forgot. I removed the first function when I was debugging. So this needs to be first. And now we know that both these should basically work. Now all we need to do is read in that text file. I'm gonna move this main down here. Create a def here called file input. And this is where we can use closure.java.io to read the resource. And what did I name this? Input.txt. All right, so let's check what this gives us. All right, how do I do this again? Evaluate word as a object buffer. Uh, oh, okay. I think I need to do line seek to this. And this 
Yeah, there we go. So we have a list of strings, which is not good. We need to change all this to numbers. So let's wrap this in a map. Uh, it's Java class. All right, so we have to wrap this in an anonymous function. All right, now this is nope, a list of numbers. And then in main, instead of printing hello worlds, we could print the result of day one part one file input as well as day one part one given the file input. And let's also get rid of this comment because I don't want it. And now instead of running test, we can run our main alias, which I believe I named as run. And those two are the answers that we want. So we want eight, nine, eight, two. I'm just gonna take this so that we can compare it here. So the first one is eight, nine, eight, two, nine, nine, which is correct. And then the next one is one, four, three, nine, three, three, nine, two, two, which is also correct. And I've already ran this, so I completed this challenge but if it's your first time there will be a little text input where you have to type in your answer but yeah that's a little bit of admin of code and also an introduction to testing in closure and i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you all next time